Oh, welcome to Power Trade. Let's get started here. Let's take a look at the uh, disclaimer here. I'm not a uh, financial advisor. I am a full-time day trader, primarily futures here. Uh, remember that there is risk in uh, trading uh, live money, and uh, so don't uh, go out and trade money that you can't afford to lose. Uh, we're here to uh, show you uh, give you different ideas on how you may uh, take trades and stuff. So uh, keep track of all your stuff in simulation before you go live and uh, just be careful. Keep your uh, losses to a minimum. Power trading uh, room, the trading format. Uh, this is a 20-minute trading session on a new topic every week. Uh, live trade for about 10 minutes. Join me in a 20-minute interactive mastermind at the end here. Is the microphone on? Uh, if your computer has a working microphone, you may be asked to join the conversation uh, in the mastermind. So your participation is very important and will help others and help you and others accelerate your learning curve. Each mastermind includes uh, wins. Tell us about your best trades of the week so far. Lessons. What did you learn this week uh, that would benefit others? A Q&A, uh, what can we help clarify that will help you be a better trader? About investing, uh, established in early 2009, we've helped thousands of students uh, and traders like you in over 53 countries around the world. Our focus is to help you get real world profits without risking your hard earned cash. Uh, we do that via our six step profitability pass so you can learn virtually in a risk-free and stress-free environment. Uh, for more information, uh, take a look at uh, www.investing.com. About your host, my name is Ted Pasobic, Chief Trading Strategist at Winvesting.com. Uh, professional day trader, primarily futures. I host a e, uh, I'm the host of the daily e-mini insider trading room at Winvesting. Uh, Quick housekeeping notes here, replays. We are recording this and we'll re, uh, post these uh, replays as soon as possible. Participate, your active participation will help you reinforce what you have learned. Suggest, send in topics for future, future power trades to support at winvesting.com. Uh, part one of the training uh, here that we're going to do, the open range trade, a simple setup that uh, every day trader should know. Uh, overview. Uh, what is the open range trade? Why every trader should know this setup. Use it solo or combo. Marking the opening range. The open range trade itself. Is it a trending day? Uh, what is the open range trade? <clears throat> the highest uh, and lowest price of a security during the first few minutes of the trading activity. It applies to all markets. Uh, it doesn't matter which one uh, that you're looking at. This does apply to all of them. So. Uh, popular time frames are 15, 30 minute, and 60 minute, uh, depending on the market. Some uh, work a little uh, more, uh, or they can be used in combination. Uh, I like the 30 minute uh, personally, uh, and anything else in between uh, I can use or just look out. We're going to be going over to the 30 minute here. Uh, example if the market opens at 9 30 a.m., then we're going to look at 10 a.m. Uh, for the end of that particular time. Uh, you had marked the highs and lows of that price uh, in that 30-minute open range. Uh, every should, trader should know this. Uh, let me get, uh, show you a chart here. Uh, let me go through a couple more slides here, and I'll show you how I mark it without using an indicator. Uh, this is nothing new. Uh, the open range trade has been around for a long time. Uh, many traders. Uh, base a good proportion of their trading decisions on these opening ranges. Uh, some traders only use this trade setup based on the open range. Uh, 
Uh, I've run into both. I use them either or, one way or the other. Uh, it, it makes real good support resistance uh, areas. It also lets me know once it breaks out of the high or the low uh, that we could possibly tr uh, be trending. Uh, markets often make their highs and lows of the entire day within the thir first 30 minutes uh, of trading. So if that's the case, it does make the highs and lows with uh, the highest and the uh, highest part and the lowest part and within the first 30 minutes, I have good support and resistance areas. This makes uh, 30 minutes after the open a great time to appreciate reversals. There we go. Highs and lows mark strong support and resistance lines that are usually good for the entire day. Even if they're broken, they're still good because what becomes what was support will become resistance. What's resistance will become support. Hope everybody can understand that. Once you learn to set up, uh, you should put this in your toolbox of trading strategies. Solo or combo. Uh, this is a simple uh, setup. I'll show you uh, based on the open range. Uh, I'll be showing you this. Or you can combine this with one of your other favorite setups, including stand candlestick patterns, uh, volume profile, uh, and use volume spikes, whatever else you might have uh, that you use. You can use it all by itself, just the open range, or you can use it with the anything else that you might have. Uh, like I say, uh, candlestick patterns, uh, volume profile, volume spikes. I like volume spikes coming into the highs and lows uh, for a possible reversal. Marking the open range. Uh, first, let the market do what it's gonna do for the first 30 minutes after the market opens. I've got one here that I've, I've got a ZB chart up I want to show you here in a minute. Uh, I wasn't watching it, uh, of course, and uh, it, it did exactly what uh, I like it to do. After the first 30 minutes, mark the highs and lows of that 30-minute range. Uh, you can use your platform with the built-in drawing tools to draw these lines on the chart. Uh, there are also indicators that will help you uh, with this. Uh, I use my London Swing, I2S, London Swing Indicator. Uh, it comes with the uh, London Swing course uh, that is included with the silver and gold memberships at uh, www.investing.com. Let me uh, swing this uh, ZB chart over. And what I normally do if I don't have the uh, indicator on, uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, uh, but I want to know what that opening range is uh, for the first 30 minutes. What I'll do is we'll just get rid of this box here. You can use lines or uh, what I like to use is the box. So I know that uh, 820 is the open, 920. You can run this out. Uh, let's say we're, we didn't even see the market here yet. If you double click this box here, go to data, you have your start time. And let's put uh, start time at 820. And the end time, I want that to go to 9.20. Now, this is for ZB. Use it for whatever market you like. If it's uh, CL, uh, uh, something that opens up at 9 o'clock, you'd put 9 o'clock to 9.30 or 9.30 for NQYMES, 9.30 to 10 o'clock. So let's put 30 in there and hit OK. And I think I might have done something wrong there. That goes a little too far. AM. There we go. And it puts it out steadily for you right there. And let's go to a one-minute chart. Five-minute wanted to slide it over a little bit. Go back here. So there's our... Actually, that was an hour range. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. I messed that one up. Well, that would be a one-hour open range. So let's go to eight fifty. Sorry about that. That 
that's more like it. And what I'll do there is I'll just mark the high here and bring in the low where it came to be the lowest. Once you have that, you can draw lines or what I'll, you can do is just extend it out. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Also, you can put the uh, line here that stops it so you can see what the uh, range looked like prior to that. Uh, a lot of times what I like to do is just keep the box out there and I'll just extend it out past that. So now we're looking at, we have the uh, price came down, it made the open range, could have taken a short here. Uh, I don't do a breakout, but you, there's no problem with trying to do a breakout to see if it breaks out. What I like about this trade here, it closed above it, pulled back down, still looking for the short here. Uh, we do come down, if you had happened to get up here, it does break down through it, it pulls back. I like to pull back here. I'd be looking for a short here uh, to take it down. It does come up a little bit. It's almost like one of my other trade setups. I want it to push down, I want to pull back and then get in. It does it again here, it comes back up. Could look for a short right here, but I prefer it to break up above it and bring the short in down here. Uh, excellent uh, example here on bonds. I wish I was watching it at that time. I had it up, I was looking for something different, but uh, that's an open range trade there. Uh, the Let's escape here for a second and take a look at the uh, CL. We'll go ahead and look at it at nine o'clock. Here I have a line drawn at nine o'clock and I will run this box here from nine o'clock to 9.30. So there's my open range trade there. Uh, once it comes out, it does push up above it. Just use your simple drawing tools. It closes above it, pulls back down below it, and I'm looking for a long in this area here. It does pierce down through here after the news. Uh, I took some pretty nice trades off that news here. And again, this these levels here will run these all the way through the rest of the day. Uh, fade it at the highs, lows, or take it as breakouts with a pullback, then take the trade. It's entirely up to you. That's something you'll have to look at to see what way you like to go with it. So with my indicator that I have, I just put the time in uh, to get that. But uh, you don't need the indicator. You can draw lines, use a box, uh, use your vertical line as a start point and an end point and draw your box in there and draw lines up on it. So it's not something that you need a, a special indicator for. And let's go back to the slides. Here we go. Uh, this here is a picture of the indicator that I have that has the uh, London Swing uh, indicator on it, and it marks the time out for me for the 30 minutes. And uh, on here, CL, looking at it, really doesn't matter what side, uh, time of the chart that you're looking at. Uh, you could even do it off a 30-minute candle itself. But uh, this indicator puts it out for me, and it will stay the whole day. Uh, treat this like a time-based trade for a regular breakout, as I had mentioned before. Just like a regular time breakout, uh, breakout trade, you can set it up uh, like that. There's no problem with that. There's a, a lot of people out there doing it. Uh, what you do is you put a buy order a couple of ticks above the high and put a sell market order a couple of ticks below the low. Wait to see what happens and uh, keep your stops tight. That's what I like about the 30-minute uh, trade, uh, open range trade. I can keep the stops a little tighter than normal because uh, I'm either not expecting it to come back up or come back down like it did here. If price breaks through it, I don't want it anymore if it breaks back down below it. So I'm going to keep the stop a little tighter. Uh, even if it comes back up here to the high, 
what I don't want it to do, I don't want it to uh, pierce up too high. So if I'm looking for a short, I'll put it maybe three, four ticks above the line here and let it go back down. I don't want it if it, if it, it wants to go up higher. I'm not going to take a full, uh, well, that one would be a five tick stop. Wouldn't take a five tick stop on that. Uh, probably a three tick stop on uh, gold or CL. Again, sometimes the market will not break through the high and low, so I'm ready to short it. That's what I would rather do to begin with, especially if it makes a double top or a double bottom. Yeah, it's a 30-minute uh, open range box. Yes, uh, Chris, CME group. Uh, it's not going to show that the open is at uh, 9.30 anymore, uh, 9 o'clock for CL. Uh, but what we're using for opens, uh, gold opens at 8.20 along with bonds. Uh, oil opens at 9 o'clock. And NQYM, uh, ES, they open up at 9.30. Now, again, you can use this as a 15-minute open range. You could use a 15-minute range or an hour. Or you could use a combination of all three. But usually after the first 30 minutes, uh, it's going to establish the highs and lows. Once it breaks out of the range, I'm looking for it to continue into that direction. Uh, then once it breaks back down into the range, I'm looking for it to head back down to the low and see if we get a breakout. We did get a breakout here, pull back, and it did it twice. So you almost got a double top right here, or an equal top uh, to, for the continuation to the downside. Uh, that's a pretty nice trade set up there. Uh, treat the trade. Uh, again, like I say, you can treat it like a regular time-based trade or look at, to fade the highs and lows. Uh, the wider the, the uh, the wider the range is, the more likely I will take it as a fade. Uh, five will work also. If the trade doesn't happen within five minutes, take your orders off and uh, look for other setups based on the highs and lows. So it's, it's a good way to look at it. You want this, uh, I wouldn't give it any more than five minutes. But the wider the range, uh, the more apt, I'm not going to even try for a breakout. I will go for a reversal. But again, I am looking at other things too, looking at volume, looking at price movement, uh, uh, maybe some volume profile on that. Uh, Ken, the, it looks close to the famous 610 trade. Uh, I like to take the trade like the 610 at the But the only thing is I don't need it to, like say it breaks out here, I do not need it to close back below it. Uh, that's the only difference. It, it comes down, I can take a breakout uh, at the tap or come down. Uh, let's say it was this. Let's just say it was this part of the uh, trade right here. See the uh, price came down and I get my pullback. I can take the trade in this area here. To, to keep going down. I don't need it to do the uh, same rules as the uh, 610. But I have that all written up in my, good, I'm glad you got it. Uh, if the market breaks out uh, of the open range, uh, that will let me know that it, it's a trending day. It's starting to form. It's not gonna necessarily mean that it is a trending day. Uh, it broke out here and it didn't trend up it came back down and now it's uh, to me it's looking like it's trending we got a, a nice trend down for the day but uh, take a look at what time it is too uh, this will be good uh, for the trend until the market comes back to the highs or lows and, and settles back uh, or it rallies back what i do expect it to do is rally back uh, 
it could rally back to the bottom of that low there. Uh, that's what I expect it to do. Maybe it gets there or not. Uh, I'll also use uh, uh, my FIB tool to find a, I like to uh, take that with a 50% pullback and uh, see if it will continue back in the same direction that it was going. Right now, the bonds are heading down. So, <clears throat> Uh, I'll have to do the uh, 610 trade at the at a later time, TJ. Anybody have any questions on the open range trade? Again, somebody had mentioned a five minute. I, I do know people. Uh, there's a, a guy I trade with in here right now that uh, sets up a five minute range, uh, and he usually lets me know when we're inside the range or we broke above or broke below the five minute range. Uh, 15 minute is a good time, 30 minutes is a good time, and so is one hour. Those are ones that are used the most, the 15, 30, and 60. We have some news coming up here at two o'clock. So this could be a little, uh, I'm, I'm grabbing my uh, news. We have FOMC minutes coming in. So we might have a pretty good trade here at two o'clock. Wanna use caution? And let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. It's a 153. Now, if you have any, yes, I do plan on taking it. I'm going to do this trade uh, like it was a regular news trade. So it's not going to be exactly like uh, a regular time trade. So you uh, pay attention and you'll uh, we'll see how I actually do this. Uh, so I will take it as a, uh, a news trade. Uh, I do like the, the CL. Don't know if it's going to react with CL like this or not. So let's grab this chart and get it out of the way. And I want to clear everything off my chart that I don't need. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at swing areas. And I do want to mark some of these because I could get a, a volume spike here too. We could get a couple of different trade setups. So I'm going to mark some of these lines here. Open up the chart. I can see these good. Uh, now I want to see if there's something a little lower. Let's put this line in for now. Let's go down to here. I can see these other lines all right. So I'm going to remove this big brown line. Open up the chart. I don't like it when I can't see everything. I want to at least see the next uh, line above me. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw about a three tick box. Let's go to three ticks there. And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the uh, box here above and below. I want my uh, order to go in three ticks above and below, but I'm going to be using this red line right here. Because I like uh, oil for the two o'clock trade. We could do gold. It, it, it doesn't matter. I'd trade it the same way, regardless. Uh, would even do bonds that way also. Just 2 o'clock, I'm used to trading CL at 2. Now what I'm going to do, when this next candle forms up, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here, how I do this. It's not something that you have to do. You could use the regular time uh, indicator uh, to place your orders. See where uh, the price just moved? We have a low here now. We have a high. And I'll just keep moving these out, watching it, going up and down. Now, I'm not going to, if I price comes in, uh, let's say we're right in the red line right now. If price comes down two ticks, then I'll just go two ticks below this line uh, if I don't have enough time to move the box. But right now, I've just got the uh, box on this candle here. And again, this would be like if it was in the red red, uh, red line. So if it moves down another tick, I'll just move it down one. And then as close to uh, the news time at the end of the minute, I'm going to place my orders above and below. Uh, gold will probably work real good on uh, this trade. It's about a half hour prior to the market closing on uh, oil, uh, what used to be the uh, market close on oil, TJ. Uh, the news that I'm trading is the FOMC minutes. We did have oil inventory today. That was my best trade of the whole week. We'll get into that in a little little bit here. I know a guy that's in here that's going to be trading this. So once price gets into this this area here, I'll start looking at moving the box. Hopefully it stays the same way right now. I, I don't mind that at all. That looks pretty good. If you're going to take this as a regular time trade, you would place your order one to two ticks above the green line here uh, for a long and a short down here. So now we have a push down. There we go. Can't see that white line. I really would like to see it. You got to pop up. So right there's our high and our low. At 36. I don't want to be too early on this because it could get me in the wrong direction. Especially if I place my orders down here. Put a sell down here. And I'll put a sell up here. I am going to try to see if I can't get a volume spike on this also. Got 15 seconds, and we've got a doji. Eight. It looks like bonds are going down. Looks like uh, gold might have gotten you in. It's not very impressive at all. Got 30 seconds to go on this candle. Bonds heading up. That looks like gold was the one to take. Golden bonds. 
got a couple of ticks. You could have, could have gotten a couple of ticks on either one. Uh, looks like gold. How far did gold go, uh, Ian? With the uh, CL uh, not doing anything, I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to bring this up to two ticks here and take it more as a uh, range for a regular uh, time trade. We'll keep that at two ticks below and one tick above. Yep, that's what I'll keep. We'll keep it like that. This trade could take a little time to uh, develop. You have a five tick stop on it. This is one of the slower days that I've seen this move. Take a look at it again around a quarter after. If I haven't gotten into the trade, I don't mind staying into it. Bonds are still heading up. This is what I'm talking about by keeping your uh, stops to a minimum. Uh, gold worked very well. Yeah, it's got to get above 35. It's got to close above it. <clears throat> you see it tap there, and it uh, looks like it's coming down. 
the uh, 21 EMA as a magnet for it and the 50. The only thing I like about the trade right now is that we are above the EMAs. What I don't like about it is that we're not above 35. And then back here, we'll have a uh, equal top somewhere right there. We have resistance above us. Vic Spike, can you guys hear me? <clears throat> yeah, okay, good. The longer this trade goes, uh, the less I like it because, it, to me, it, it want it, it has no follow through for the upside, and it looks like it might want to come back down. Again, we do have a lot of resistance above us. Keep going, close green, and we should keep going. Get a doji, watch what color this candle turns, and that should be the direction that it wants to go. The six E's, uh, the E's, uh, sixes all uh, jumped, six E, J, A, and B, Joel. Nothing wrong with taking 20 bucks out of there as far as I'm concerned. So I'm risking two to possibly get 10. Yeah. A lot of resistance up here. Like I say, I needed to go. It really needs to close above 35. If it can close above 35, I think we can go. Oh. <clears throat> oh, it looks like a three tick stop. 32, 29. Oh, three tick. I'll take a three tick. Now we got more resistance here right at 35.
we're just stuck here. Let's go ahead. I want to pull this up above me. Maybe I'll just hold off and I want to go up. I like to at least see see it hit thirty seven. I'm going to drop my order here at uh, plus three, out at three. I've got plus three on that. Let's go ahead and uh, get to some of the others. I don't know what the Fed said. Don't care. Just that I know that there was some news. <laughs> I don't really don't care what news is. I just want to know when it is. All right. Part three of the mastermind wins, lessons, and q and A. I'll take a look and see what they what they say later on. I use two different uh, news sites. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, the reason why I use two, uh, Forex Factory gives me uh, the foreign foreign news, and I I kind of like it, uh, looking at it. And then I get to see what the uh, the news is, uh, what it says here. And the other one is uh, for the, this one here is Forex Factory, and the other one is Econo Day. And that's what I look at. Those are the two that I like. There's other ones that are good too. Uh, just the, those those two there, I like the best. The uh, Kano Day will also give you the foreign news also. Forex Factory, I do like to see, take a look at, at if news pops for any reason. I like to see what it, what happened, why it did it. Uh, so tell us about uh, what was your best trades so far this past week. Uh, if you have a microphone, let me know and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, just type it in the chat box. Uh, today was my, uh, this year was my best trades uh, of today. I did take the br the breakout uh, for a long. I shorted the uh, volume spike. And then right over here, I also took a short uh, coming down. Uh, what I was doing, I was watching the uh, this candle coming down, and it was coming down pretty hard. So I put my uh, order uh, right here to get taken in for the that push down. Uh, these uh, first two that I took here, I did not hit both targets. Uh, I hit the first target at a plus 10, and then uh, either a seven, five or seven tick targets. Uh, this one here, I did take a five or a 10 and a 15 tick target on here. Uh, at the time, I ended up with uh, 550 for the day. I was up in the room uh, a 120 uh, before this. So it all wasn't that was, all was not in one four hundred dollars on that trade. Investing.com is a good site, also Joel. Yes, it is. So out of the whole week, this year was my best uh, trade setup. There was more than uh, one trade. Uh, it was the uh, uh, trade from uh, the oil report, and that was mine. Let me know what was yours.
Anybody else have any good trades? Ian, how about you? Anybody? Uh, Russ, you'll tell me your best trade. You want to come in? Uh, let's see. Ian is saying ZB, GC has almost the same candle. Oh, for the uh, ZB and GC, the candles look almost the same. All right. Fred, uh, got a three and an eight off CL double bottom at 745. Very good. All right, Robin. Thanks a lot. Okay, let me find Russ here. Russ, your mic is on. Hey. How are you doing, Russ? Good, good. Well, my trade, my best trade was today as well. The, uh, I had uh, for the inventory, and I had I was going to run three contracts at 10, 15, and 20, and uh, I'm trading in top step, and I didn't put an OCO on, which means that I had lost my stop, and for whatever reason, it combined the three trades together. So I just put my, uh, luckily it went, I mean, it was quick, but it went slow enough that I had time to move over to the to the uh, sell button and watch it go up. So I went up 21 or 22. I came out with 610. Uh, Very good. That yeah, so that was sweet. So I was down 70 at that point, so I ended up with 540. Good, good. Uh, the reason why it does that is because it's it's actually showing that you have six contracts out and you can only trade three. Yeah. Yeah, so I lost so, my target. Well, I guess I lost my target as well, didn't I? Yeah, you lost everything. You had way too many out. Usually, uh, sometimes it'll just leave one, one stop out and one, let's see, one stop and one target and the other ones are you, you can't see it's like you you hit the x button on it accidentally but yeah. uh when trading live if your account can't handle it 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 will not it'll do the same thing uh you'd have to uh end up closing it out you lucky you were green instead of the other way yeah uh, really because <laughs> you, you could have hit that whatever you can make live in it and and it doesn't matter uh on that whatever you can whatever good you can see just prepared be prepared for the downside of that because uh, I, I can tell you that from personal experience <laughs> definitely uh, thanks I guess we traded this we traded it a little different I don't know how you got in I know my uh, targets and stuff were a little different uh, but we had different uh, areas that we were getting in also yeah. so I was happy with mine. I got the volume spike uh, turnaround, came back down, and took the short side of that too. I wish I had quit trading for the day. <laughs> that was a lesson learned. All right, thanks, Russ. I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Anybody else have anything? Fred, I think you. Did, yeah, I, personally, I think you did good. You got three and an eight off a, a particular trade that you've been working on for a month. And you finally got it. That's very good. I, when I'm doing these time trades, I personally like to have or the uh, news trades. I try to make it a habit to go with OCO on it. Uh, I have had it where I've been in both directions at the same time in my uh, live account and it might be showing green and when I hit the button I'm I've lost because I was both long and short at the same time uh, and it didn't kick me out uh, Joel the 930 NQ and YM uh, those were your best trades today or uh, this week good I'm gonna start looking at YM uh, a little more I want to see if it's uh, if it's uh, smooth. Uh, it's smoothed out uh, like it had been in the past. 
Uh, right now, uh, I feel that NQ is a little choppier. And when I was trading it, it was was smooth. Now it's real choppy, and I want to try to see if uh, YM's a little smoother. What did you learn this week that would benefit other traders? If you have a microphone, let me know, and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, type it into the chat box and let me know. Uh, mine was uh, today I was up the 550, and I really should have stopped trading. Uh, I did manage to bring that down to uh, I'm up uh, $385. I was just looking for that that big runner to get uh, get everything. Scott didn't trade. You don't trade at all. So when I'm uh, up, uh, I, uh, I I let it come down a little too far. Although I'm still up, you know, close to four hundred, uh, but. Uh, I just should have quit at uh, at 550 and be done with it. Yeah, your lesson was don't trade. <laughs> it it I tell you, it, to me it's been it's been difficult for the last three four weeks. Man, it could even be longer than that. Grab what you can and get the heck out. Overall, it's it's been a a, a decent a decent okay. It's been okay. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have anything? It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, what if you just pick have find something? I try to learn something new every day or. Uh, and I keep track of it. I, I write it in the book. And you have no idea how many times I see this one. Uh, woulda, shoulda, coulda, stayed at uh, 500 and stopped trading. <laughs> I'm not the only one that does it. It's good. Just keep it in mind. The, the thing is, every trade that I got in, was they were all good setups. Uh, they followed my rules. Uh, they just didn't work. Uh, should have known with FOMC minutes coming up, should have known uh, with the oil inventory after it, uh, how that works. Uh, notice that there was uh, bond uh, auctions today also. Uh, the, usually I just skip, pass right over those. It does, didn't really mean too much, but uh, trading NQ and uh, gold, uh, both uh, those are the two that I lost. Uh, lost the money on NQ and gold, but the setups I seen the setups and I I took them. Uh, do you agree uh, with this? This here's a uh, a quote: uh, a, su a successful trader is one who believes they are doing the right thing when they take a loss. Jeff Byish. I believe this. Uh, it's a saying, uh, I, I wrote this down, or uh, I didn't really write it down. I've seen, I uh, remember it. Uh, I don't even remember who had said it. I don't know if it was this uh, with Jeff or not. Uh, I want to thank Dan for finding out who had actually said it uh, so he gets credit for it. It's not my saying. It's, it's a quote that uh, once I realized uh, even when I take a loss, uh, like the loss is all the way from 550 down to 380. Uh, what I, what every one of those trades was a good setup uh, that just didn't work. So I was doing it right. The only one thing that I was doing wrong is really not. Uh, I'm, I'm up. I'm good. I'm up for the week. Uh, I, ju I just should have just cut it off at 550. I was looking for an $1,000 day. And you know when they come, they come, and when they when you force it, you go backwards. But the trades that I did get in, 
followed my rules and uh, uh, I feel like it, it was the right thing to do at the time. And if I were to go back into market replay, I'd put those trades right back in the same way. It's just what I've seen. I didn't move my stop back from uh, a five tick to a 20 tick. Uh, I did tighten the stop up and everything's worked out well uh, from a seven tick down to a, a three uh, on some and uh, NQ, I probably brought it down to uh, two points rather than uh, a, a two and a half points, but I did tighten it up. Uh, targets were not hit. So I, it's pretty much got in and it just went the other, uh, the wrong way. So uh, a successful trader who is, is one who believes they are doing the right thing when they take a loss. And uh, I agree with that. There are trades uh, that I have taken in the past and I'm sure I'll continue to do it. Uh, when I take a loss, uh, probably shouldn't have got in the trade because it's either revenge trading or just trying, uh, just feeling that I have to get into a trade. In my room, uh, when I feel like I have to get a trade, I'll uh, I'll just step away. I say I gotta go get a cup of coffee, or you know I'll be right back, or I just say I'll say I have to get away from here because I feel uh, personally I feel like I have to take a trade just to get into trade, uh, so I walk away, and uh, uh, come back and take a look at it again. Uh, what can we help clarify that will help you be a better futures trader? If you have a microphone, let me know. I'll unmute you. Otherwise, type it into the chat box. Uh, Scott kicks the dog. Uh, that's not very nice. It wasn't his fault. No, I got a story for you. Uh, I think Ian, Russ were on. They were in the room was in the room a, a few days ago in the trade room. My cat jumps up and I'm trying to get into a trade and the cat uh, hits hits an area or it pushes my mouse and I'm trying to place the trade. Uh, and I placed the trade in the wrong spot. The cat did, I'll blame it on the cat. Uh, the direction was right. I wanted to get in, but I was looking at a price to get in long. So the cat got me in a little earlier and uh, that cat made me $80. So, uh, you know, I had to thank the cat and uh, went and got it a new toy. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that, Scott. <laughs> Take the dog out more often, and that won't happen. Yeah, new way to play cat and mouse there, right, JV? <laughs> uh, their mother used to place trades for me. Uh, she made me more than uh, more than eighty dollars. Never could. I finally figured out how she was doing it. <laughs> My max stop, TJ on. Uh, NQ, I have a 13 tick stop, and just about everything else is seven. And I do, t I try to tighten it up as soon as possible. Seven tick stop for the most part. 13 on NQ, and try to get that down to 10 or less. Next step, where to go from here? Review your notes and take action on at least one thing you've learned. Uh, maybe it's the 30-minute uh, uh, open range. Uh, just take some action on it. Take a look at it. Uh, visit us at www.investing.com and check out the profitability path. Send in your feedback and suggestions for future episodes to support at winvesting.com. Uh, I don't trade currencies, uh, so I, I would, 
but I have way too many things that I'm looking at already. Uh, 6E, I used to trade that quite a bit. I have traded uh, the yen and uh, the Canadian dollar. I think they're good markets. It's just that I have way too much on my plate right now. 7 tick. Oh, uh, Steve, that's not that's not true. I use either a 4 or 5 tick on an inventory. 4 or 5 tick stop. Well, uh, thanks for asking the, about that. I tighten up my stop on inventory. Uh, just about all the news. I want to, uh, I don't want the risk. Uh, there's times I'll go in with, today I went in with a five tick stop, uh, but most of the time I'm going in with a four. I know it's tight, but I know how hurt, how bad it can hurt if it does go in the wrong direction. And hopefully it gets me out. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, see you next time. Catch you around. Thanks for joining me again, everybody. Uh, thanks for staying around. Hope you learned something. If you have anything, uh, write it in to support uh, and see what we can do. Y'all have a good one. Bye.